Hey guys, welcome back to the Balanced Blonde Podcast, Soul on Fire. I'm so excited about today's amazing guest, Suzanne Hall, the founder of the Chalkboard Magazine, which I'm sure so many of you guys know and read and love, and I love her. We connect so much. But before we dive in, I want to thank today's sponsor, Sunbasket. So you're probably seeing a theme here that I am hugely into meal delivery services when they're healthy, of course, because as much as I love to cook at home and trust me, I do, it's not every weekend that I can make it to the farmer's market. In my ideal world, I go to the farmer's market every Sunday. I pick out all my fruits and veggies. I get my organic meat from the local farmers and I get my fish. And that's an ideal Sunday, but most Sundays, including every single weekend through the rest of the year, which is totally crazy, I'm not here. I'm not actually in town. So Sunbasket to the rescue. They have the yummiest, yummiest meals. And they make things really easy because their healthy meal kits are delivered straight to your front door. And those meal kits are full of organic and sustainable produce, responsibly sourced meats and seafood, and easy recipes that taste amazing. So when I say that these recipes are easy, I legitimately mean that they're extremely easy and simple. If they weren't, it wouldn't be the right meal delivery service for me because I need things to be quick. I don't have a lot of patience when I get home after a long day day. I really just want to hang out with Hudson and roll around on the floor doing yoga and cuddling with him and spend time with Jonathan and do all of the things that we love. So I love being in the kitchen, but I like things to be nice and easy. So Sun Basket's simple recipes help me get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. And the cleanup is equally easy, a total breeze. They have paleo, lean and clean, gluten-free, vegetarian, and family options. So that makes it really easy for me to eat the way that I want, which is mostly paleo and gluten-free. Sometimes I go through vegetarian phases. And for all of my friends who are moms, who have families, there's family options, which is amazing. So Sun Basket has totally been the easiest way to stay on top of all my healthy eating goals, cooking at home, not always ordering out and um, calling in food or walking to a local restaurant because I really do like to be in my kitchen. So they make it nice and easy. So they have an offer for you. For all of my special Soul on Fire listeners, head to sunbasket.com slash balance to get $35 off of your first order. That is sunbasket.com slash balanced to get $35 off. sunbasket.com slash balanced. B-A-L-A-N-C-E-D. And now we will head into the intro for this episode with the amazing, amazing Suzanne Hall. So if you guys don't know who Suzanne is, you're about to fall in love with her in this episode. She's a close friend of mine and someone who I've been deeply inspired by for many years here in LA. She is a co-founder and the editor-in-chief of the Chalkboard Mag. So you've probably seen them online or on Instagram. They are the online magazine devoted to the art of living well that was launched by Pressed Juicery in 2012. So they are linked to Pressed Juicery. And if you've seen all of the delicious pressed freezes on like every single wellness Instagrammer's account ever on Instagram and social media, then I'm sure you're familiar with Pressed, even if you don't live in Southern California. And the really cool thing about the chalkboard mag is that they're all about wellness, all about the stuff that I'm obsessed with and that a lot of people who listen to this podcast, aka you, are also obsessed with. So they do really cool spotlights that talk about alternative health, non-toxic living, fitness, nutrition, celebrity profiles, and natural beauty. They cover also things like design and nice, clean, beautiful spaces like the ones that I am currently trying to cultivate in my own home because I know the importance of a nice, beautiful, open space. And they also talk about all sorts of balanced living tips, mind, body, artisan made goods, all that good stuff. Suzanne is such an amazing person. We, I think we met through just a ton of mutual friends to begin with. And then we became friends ourselves because we have so much in common from all of our self-care rituals to 
being so into wellness and fitness and natural beauty and writing. And it was just really fun to sit down with Suzanne and learn more about her. And I have to tell you guys, just to set the scene, we did this episode after I had gone to a chalkboard event, which we'll talk about here. But so we had spent the morning together. We spent the afternoon together doing this podcast. And then we talked for at least another hour and a half, maybe two hours on my couch after we did this episode because we just really connect. I look up to her in so many ways. And I'm just so excited that her passion for living well, for non-toxic beauty, for building a brand and running a team and running a digital magazine, something that's like a goal of so many people in this world. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that because it's totally true. Um, She brings all of that wisdom to the table today. So we'll go ahead and dive into the episode. Thanks again to Sunbasket for sponsoring. And if you guys are interested in doing the Mind Body Green Functional Nutrition Program that I talked about in last week's episode, you can still use my code for one more day. And that is a bit.ly link that you can find in the show notes, bit.ly slash MBG XTBB and you can do capital MBG lowercase x capital TBB that's mind body green x the balanced blonde abbreviation just in case and that is a functional nutrition program that I'm going to be doing that you can do right alongside of me and I think it would be really fun to do together so sign up tomorrow's the last day to sign up and then November 1st the program starts we'll learn from so many experts like Kelly Levesque who's another mutual friend of mine and Suzanne's and the list goes on and on and on so check out all the details online and I really don't don't want to cut into this episode any further because Suzanne has so many tips for us. So let's dive in and get started. All right, guys, I am here with Suzanne Hall, a close friend of mine who I've been dying to have on the podcast since I started. So I'm so happy that she's here. She's the co-founder and the editor-in-chief of the Chalkboard Mag online, which I'm sure tons of you read. It's a wellness digital magazine, and it's beautiful. It just is put together so beautifully. I love the vibe. love the aesthetic. So Suzanne, thanks for being here. Jordan, thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so proud of the success you're having on the podcast so far. Thank you. It's been fun to check out the little roster of people that I love as well, checking out who you've had on the show. Yeah, it's our community. It's it's all the wellness, spiritual people that we love, that we're both so into, and we're lucky because we got to hang out twice today. Yes, we went we did. boxing this morning with the chalkboard and Varley. I'm actually in. feeling so good right now. This is like Me the perfect too. condition in which to do a podcast. I know. <laughs> you get out all of your aggression. I'm still and like slightly sweaty. Yeah, me too. As you can tell, I decided not to wash my hair. I I'm love it. Thinking about going to yoga later. And I felt like if I didn't wash my hair, that would be more incentive to get that's to the commitment. studio. I feel like that's something very specific to yogis, actually. The multiple <laughs> classes a day. It is. <laughs> I know. But I like to do like a tough workout. Like we did boxing, get my heart rate like really high. And then take more of a wind down totally. vinyasa class. Because it just feels good. Because I'm going to be sore after that boxing class. That actually doesn't sound like a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Core power. We can Ooh. keep sweating it out. Yeah. Yes. So, since people probably ask you all the time what you do, yes. I would rather like to lead with what do you like to do? Ooh, yeah. Well, one thing I'm really grateful for is that they're much of the same thing. The chalkboard is like our little tagline in the chalkboard is a guide to living well, which is really fun. I have kind of a little matrix for what that includes in my head (laughs) and um, that you can kind of see in the, in the content flow that we have. But honestly, everything that we cover is our topics that I really love myself. So, you know, on, in the day to day, one of the great things is my schedule changes all the time because content is constantly changing. We publish three stories a day. Um, So I'm always, I mean, this is probably the best and worst thing about my day is that we're, we're talking about new things all the time. So 
the best part of that is the obvious keeps me curious, keeps me learning, keeps me super intrigued um, and discovering things that I myself am like applying to my life. And then on the flip, (laughs) my email box is a nightmare. And even things that I'll do to take little breaks. Um, I mean, Instagram barely counts, right? Because we all know that Instagram can also cause anxiety. But <laughs> but even popping onto Instagram, I'm, I start to create content. So it's a problem. Me too. There are no boundaries. Yes, I know. The boundary thing creator. is hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, boundaries are probably... Now I'm moving into the negative, right? You asked me what the best part of my... Well, you're giving me a well-rounded <laughs> answer, and yeah. the boundary thing is is really difficult thing and is so real. I'd be curious to hear how you do keep your boundaries yeah. because it's something I'm constantly working on, especially like you said, with trying to balance having a flexible, wellnessy, content-driven schedule with also emails, getting back yeah. to people, Instagram being work also. Like, it's kind of hard to put those boundaries up. Yeah. Gosh, I have a lot to say in this topic because it's something that um, isn't unique to content creators. It's all of us right now. Anyone who lives in this culture and in this time, it's just an overwhelming lifestyle for almost yes. everybody. So finding um, Finding boundaries is is tough. I think the key is is that it is a continuum. It's, it's like a constant balance. So something that works for you today might not be the same fit for tomorrow. And it's just knowing that that's okay. I think one thing about um, both of our jobs is we have a lot of freedom. And I think that the flip side of freedom is you have to be constantly aware and constantly um, making choices. So. There's not a lot for me that's on autopilot. Um, So I'm constantly having to be intentional about what I'm doing every single day. And I think that's actually a wonderful way to live. It's a wonderful privilege to have that much freedom. But on the flip side, you have to just be so conscious about how you're managing your energy and how you're managing your time. Like for me, I would say a lot of it has to do with making decisions personally to manage my life like a business or to manage my life in a way that it seems too much at first. You're like, this is ridiculous. Do I really need to like create, you know, this boundary here? Do I really need to put this down or walk away from this? Like, it seems like I'm being, I'm being overkill or being too cautious, but it's, you quickly learn, no, you actually must do these things. Yes. You must, or, (laughs) you know. I'm with you. It's like creating the non-negotiables that you have, because I've been thinking about this a lot too, how, you just tell yourself, or at least I tell myself all the time, oh, well, it's not a big deal just this one time. I'll just wake up and look at my phone right away and I'll get right on Instagram. I'll check some emails. Yeah. But everything adds up and every single day adds up. So if that becomes your habit, then that's what you're doing quite frequently. Yeah. Or even if it's just the way that you're starting your day, one day, that's your whole day. Everything really does add Definitely. up. So. so I really like to go hard. I mean, honestly, it's my personality to just like, I love to do a lot. I love to work quickly. I'm like an yeah, eye eater. So I love us. to go at full speed. I love my espresso. So for me, one part of, of um, managing that daily is creating great infrastructure, great tools, so that as much as possible about the work that we do can there are clear expectations mm-hmm. and deadlines and um, cycles. Cycles are really important to me when, you, when you're talking about managing a large amount of content. Your relationship helps because you said your husband is more of a private person. And For I sure. know from my own relationship experience, when one person is more private, it helps you stay off of oh, I social don't know media, what, yeah. like on dates and that kind of stuff. hundred <laughs> percent. So yes. um, my husband are definitely opposites attract. So I'm super extroverted, you know, extroverted, out there, social. Creating content starts to become this like way of thinking in life. So yeah, definitely him being, um, he's really good. I feel like at knowing when to take down time, you know, we'll go on vacation. I'll have a stack of books and a journal or what have you. And he's like, really, you know, you couldn't take a podcast. You couldn't bring a one piece of fiction and just chill out. So I feel like he's good at making those little chunks in life where this is personal, this is yes. professional, this is, you know, out, this is in. And yeah, he's definitely 
my life coach in that sense. <laughs> it's so nice to have somebody like that. It's, it's, so it's important. Good. Definitely. So a question that I often lead with on this podcast is if you were a color, yes. what color best represents your energy? Ooh, that's a good one. This is a strange response, but the first thing that comes to mind is like, that like rainbow prismatic kind Ooh, of situation. That's an amazing I mean, answer. <laughs> You're a rainbow. I, I don't know if I, can, if I can really fill the shoes of a rainbow <laughs> prismatic I think color. you can. You're a ray of light. But um, I, I, I'd say that's kind of one of the underlying themes of my personality is there are such a wide variety of things that I'm interested in. I definitely don't like to be pegged. Like if someone thinks I'm blue, I mean, I'm immediately like, but what about orange? You know? <laughs> yes, yes. And then you start thinking of all the different ways that you're all the different colors. Yeah. I totally get that. And I think I'm just fascinated by um, how a lot of different things work together. You know, I, I think that's one of the things that really led me to wellness, honestly, is like finding how all the colors kind of like work together and why there are different colors. So I would say I would say a rainbow. That's such a good answer. I've never had somebody say rainbow. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm the first. You are the first. That's that's lovely. So, how did you get how did you get involved with press juicery, which is right. the Yeah, so the chalkboard's part behind. of exactly. like the press juicery family. Yes. We really the, the chalkboard started out as um really press juiceries brand, brand blog, which it still really is. Um it has its own identity, I would say. But, you know, when, when Press Juicery first started, and it's crazy looking back at how quickly the Press Juicery company has gone. It's been so exciting to watch. Um, but when Press Juicery started, we were kind of at the height of juice cleanse mania, I would say. When was this? Um, so we're about, I want to say we're about six years old. Cool. Isn't that crazy to yes. Think? And, you know, I am still a huge proponent of juice cleansing, actually. I think there's a lot of backlash against it right now. And I think that's just, unfortunately, naturally what happens when something gets overblown out and then, you you know, people like want to hate on it. There's definitely really sensible things I hear most people saying when they're, when they're kind of negating the juice cleanse thing. I think most of it has to do with like the crazy hype around juice cleanses or why people are juice cleansing or the way that they're juice cleansing. There's a whole lot of negativity there. But um, I'm going on this little segue about juice cleansing because I think it's that, probably a point that your yeah, readers would all care about. it's an about. important topic to cover. Yeah. People listening certainly, I think, have questions about juice cleansing, the healthy way to do it. So we should yeah. definitely get into so that. So a, a quick note on it. Um, I definitely understand people's concerns about juice cleansing. And most, like I said, most people poo-pooing it have good reasons. But for me, juice cleansing is something that's been around for a really long time, like juicing period has been around for a really long time in all the OG wellness circles. And um, I think it kind of lived this normal life. It was this normal health protocol that you could use. Yes, of course, it's a little extreme. Any form of like fasting is really uncomfortable and, and extreme in, in a sense, but it lived this like normal life. And I think when it got its like overexposure in the spotlight, it had this like downfall. Yeah. Like a dramatic. Like with anything, I think when it comes to like the overly healthy way of life, you can overdo it as I obviously yeah. know, because I've been there. However, I'm totally with you. And I think I've come back around to juice cleanses right. for certain people, for certain things. And I'm always careful to talk about it because I know that I have a big portion of my audience found me through my whole juice cleansing addiction type of thing, which totally. is obviously not the healthy, balanced way to juice cleanse. However, I think in the circles of like healing yeah. and Ayurveda yeah. and people who really follow like ancient Chinese medicine, exactly. that kind of stuff, a mono diet, which could be juice or which could be like kitchery or it could right. be all green foods or whatever it is. It would be prescribed by everybody listening, prescribed to you by some kind of holistic doctor. Yeah. I think that can be really healing for people who have, who have actual like, health problems. For sure. I think it's like juice cleansing was never really meant to be a trend. So people hate the trend of juice cleansing because that's what you do with trends. Like mm -hmm. trends come and go. Like you love neon colors and now neon colors are out of style, but juice cleansing was never meant to be something that was in style or out of style. It's, it's vegetable, you know, <laughs> You're it's like, so right. People hate the trend, but yeah. that doesn't mean that 
they have the license to hate what it is yeah. at its core. So I see that happening a lot in wellness where Me people too. are like, guys, bone broth daily. And then someone's like, well, now we're, now we hate bone broth. And it's like, it never, it, uh, this context right. has no Same bearing. with saturated <laughs> fats and coconuts yeah. and ghee yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. Right. It's like, oh, well, actually you can totally overdo it on the saturated yeah. fats. Like, Obviously, just moderation. It's one of those funny things where one of my goals with the chalkboard is to kind of create this fun fashion related or fashion adjacent thing with wellness where pe- and with beauty where, where people can access wellness the way they do those kinds of things. Really fun, really sexy, really making things that are good for you, fun for you. That's really, really important to me. But um, the downside of that is sometimes you do, you get these extreme trends going on things that really never should have had haters or like, right. or addicts in the first place. You yeah, know? it's hard. Well, it's hard also, I think for people like us, because we have these platforms where we want to share these things that people may otherwise have never heard of, right. like Panchakarma. And right. we'll definitely get into that because we both love oh, that. Yeah. Um, however, it's almost hard to share about it on a public platform without kind of making it Inciting sound like yeah a trend <laughs> exactly like I talk about panchakarma or shamanism reiki yeah. and people I feel like take it in a way that it's like oh you know she lives in LA she's jumping on the bandwagon it's exactly. trendy but to me this stuff is a way of life it's yeah. like lifestyle tools and tactics to be healthy and to yeah. be happy and to live well mm-hmm. I think sometimes like people use something that's trending really hard is I always use the term gateway drug. They use it to like get interested in wellness. And I definitely like harness that full board. I want people to, to get hooked into something because I think at the end of the day, the trend and the cultural thing falls away and it's just you, yourself and I, and it's, it's the things that end up sticking to you. The thing, you know, the cycles you end up having in your life or the foods you end up using and you, you learn more and more because you have a good experience with some health product or whatever. I mean, um, there's a dark and a light side there, but yeah, I think I'm with sometimes you. it's just how we are as humans. We, that's how we discover something. And then it's like, you take that string and you follow it and you follow it and you discover this whole. You're right. The, the same can be said for yoga because people are constantly getting down on the trend of yoga. And the right. big thing within the traditional yoga community is Instagram and social media has made yoga so trendy and something that it's not and all about the vinyasa style classes, all about the really advanced poses. Yeah. But the teachers who I really look up to say, that's great. That's great. Embrace that social media is spreading the message of yoga because if people get attracted to that very attractive, more trendy style of asana, mm-hmm. then maybe they'll start taking more traditional classes at some point and totally. doing a teacher training or trying kundalini or something Absolutely. that's a little bit more a little bit more out there or it's just for them you know like you said it's it's everybody has their own personal journey so if they like to go to core power and sweat it out for 75 minutes like that's so good that right. is somebody like listening that to their body is, is is worth it and i think totally. the the kinds of people who are like turned off by these by these kinds of trends and things I mean, sure, some of them are skeptics who, who might never get into the, the good stuff. But a lot of those people, too, are, are maybe independent thinkers that are, you know, will roll their eyes about the group think and that kind of thing. But they're, they're going to find it in their own way, and that's fine. I just think it, sometimes it takes different tools to get people involved in this stuff. Yes, you're totally right. But anyway, we veered <laughs> Back off. to yes. the chalkboard. So we were talking about what the beginning of the chalkboard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when the chalkboard started, and it's fun because I think I, I say our audience is usually about 50-50 on those who know that we're part of the Press Juice Free family and those who don't know. So, I was going to ask about that yeah. because I feel like it's not the most obvious, yeah. um, which is probably intentional. Yeah, it's also, you guys do It's intentional, a but it's also just really part of the way that we run content. It would make zero sense in the way we were just talking about it. It would make no sense if we were just talking about green juice every, 
all day, every day. And it's, it's exactly what we were just saying. Like green juice is kind of a gateway drug. And it's one of those things that if you fall in love with green juice, you're kind of like ready for all these other things. Like you're ready to explore this, you know, to detox your life. You're ready to discover better ways of living that are less stressful. You're, you're ready to learn a lot more about nutrition. So, I mean, it's just, it makes, it makes a lot of sense for us to kind of build out this whole lifestyle. And it's incredibly yeah. fun. Because it's a whole lifestyle and it is it fun. Is. Yeah. You get to do all the fun stuff. Yeah. So um, I kind of, I explained it pretty much already, but uh, the chalkboard started as Press Juicery's lifestyle site. Um, we were kind of in the height of the juice cleanse thing. So at that time, what we were trying to do is really provide something for our customer that um, helped, like when you do a three-day juice cleanse, like you, we kind of like take over your life for three days in a sense. You need a lot more information than if you were just buying one bottle of green juice. You know, you're kind of, you have all these questions. You need to know how to manage your day, how to deal with all this stuff. So I think that was part of really the original impulse um, is to provide that kind of information. Plus we're an LA brand. So um, the founders of Press Juicery and I are very much on the same page, I would say, about just kind of painting this beautiful lifestyle. I mean, look how beautiful like a press juicery bottle is or a press juicery store. We all have a lot of fun with like the aesthetic. Yeah, the you aesthetic know? is big. Yeah, the I aesthetic think, matters. Yeah, you know? it does matter. I think you guys created the most Instagrammable freeze of all time. Oh, like who listening even. has not seen a press juicery freeze oh, on social media? Freeze. They're everywhere. We're I mean, so close to a really good one too. I really know. Good store. It's, I can actually practically see it from my yeah, apartment. You, you it's just great on the corner. Isn't this a good real location? estate here in that, near a freeze? Yeah. I'm not <laughs> sure that I could ever give this spot up because I can walk everywhere that matters to me. Definitely. Press juicery, Whole Foods, Orange Theory, Alfred Coffee, nice. the yoga we studio where I used to teach. Live right here too. Nice. Yeah. Nice place, Jordan. I know. There's a, <laughs> there's a good crew of neighbors around here. Um, but let's see, what else should I touch on? Yeah, I mean, that's the basic gist of it. I um, I mean, I always joke that Press Juicery didn't understand how caffeinated I was because <laughs> I think we've definitely outpaced what we thought we'd build in the beginning. But I really, it felt very, I want to say it felt very serendipitous. I think a better wellness word would be um, like synchronicity. Oh, my <laughs> favorite word. I really do love that word. It's really a good one. There's something about serendipity which seems like, oh, it just kind of accidentally happened. To me, synchronicity is more like you were working, you were heading in this direction. You were like, you know, literally for me, I was like studying. I was like kind of manifesting in this direction and then meeting the press juicery founders and like having the opportunity to start a site that I love so much was really just like, I always say serendipitous, but it really is that synchronicity thing where it was just yeah. like all the p puzzle pieces really kind of clicked and it was just kind of meant to be. Yeah. I believe wholeheartedly when things are in sync and there's those beautiful synchronicities between you and a brand or you and the people that you're meant to be surrounded yeah. with, things just click and things, things are start to come flow. to you. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I feel like there could be, I'm always speaking to the skeptic. So I can only imagine someone listening to who might be like, oh, really? Please do things speak just to the come skeptic. To you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to hear but what you have to say I about that. I guess what I mean is, um, you know, I, look, tragedy in life happens. And I'm always so aware of the like exception to the rule and like all the suffering and all the times things don't work out in life. We've all been through so much. Of yes. Oh yeah. Everything. Well, just because there's been a lot of things in sync doesn't yeah. mean that it's been a seamless journey. Not at all. And it, and it doesn't need to be like all that is supposed to be a part of all of our journeys, unfortunately or not. But I do believe that these moments, these kind of intersections that happen with people or projects or even, um, just information. I think that that synchronicity does happen if you're open to it. If you're, it's kind of like you're paying in with your energy to like what you're interested in or what you would like. I think it is really surprising the way that the universe will kind of find a way to yeah. bring you into alignment with more resources. I agree with you. And I think what I would say to the skeptic also of the serendipity and fate and whatever word you choose to use, um, fill in the blank, everybody listening. I think it's a lot of hard work, I think, to get yourself into alignment and 
do the self-discovery process right. and involvement to get to a place where you really are in line with your goals and then matching yourself with similar vibration to those goals. So it's not like things just fall, fell into Suzanne's lap necessarily. No, but that's the it's, ultimate point. You it's work getting very to your, hard. Yeah, well, and it's getting to your self-truth, like you were saying. I guess that really is, in a nutshell, is um, usually the resistance we have in life like comes mostly from us. Even if it's stuff ways that we feel or that we behave that are because something bad happened to us. Even if it's that stuff, it's the more we remove all that inner contradiction and get really clear and get really focused on, you know, our intention. I mean, I feel like I'm really butchering this, to be honest, Jordan, because we could have a whole other podcast on this I topic. I know, we really and could. It's, I'm trying I love to be concise, this topic. But, um, no, I, this is, know, I love when big podcast topic. topics just go with the flow, yeah. like we're talking about, the living in the flow, living in yeah. the now. I think that's perfect. And I think people listening are definitely very interested in that very topic because yeah. it's very fun to think about things being in sync. But also, I think it takes a lot of diligence to focus and to let go of that self-doubt that you're talking about because— yeah. The moment that you start doubting that things are in sync and things are in alignment and things are working is when the flow stops. Yeah. And so this is the kind of stuff I'm constantly researching and looking into and reminding myself through meditation and different teachers and yoga, of course, that living in the flow very much takes living in the moment. So just um, kind of letting go of resistance and going with it mm -hmm. and just casting aside the doubts. Yeah. I think at the most revelatory part for me in all this is like, I think it, it's very scary for some people and then others are very skeptical about it. But I think for me, understanding that the, the baggage that I have in some way, I think I, I don't think I have a lot of baggage, but like when you really start to look and people put it in that context that you are the one resisting or that you are the one who has contradiction that I love this school of thought. That's like double mindedness where like you both think you can do it, but you can't do it. Or you both think you think that you are, you know, going to do this, but also not, or, you know, all those kinds of like contradictions. I think it's really, really empowering to realize that they're there. I'm super grateful to learn that they're there. I think some people are like, don't want to see it. Yeah. Well, but I think just it's empowering because it's not a, a paradigm of thought that I w was taught growing up. And I think I wasn't really aware that I could deal with it all on my own, that I was the one at the root of it, stopping myself yeah. from ABC, you know? I like that. I've actually never heard of that double-mindedness school of thought, yeah. but I like it. It reminds me kind of of the theory of meditation that you're not, you don't have to let go of your thoughts, but just kind of detach from them and watch them float by. Yeah. Like not necessarily putting the pressures on yourself for things to work out one way or the other. Because of course, even when you're excited about something and diving into a new project, there's always that doubt. And I think being realistic about that is very smart because otherwise you're kind of just diving in full throttle and you're not putting all your ducks in a row. And I think it's good to believe wholeheartedly that you can do something, but also have the realistic mindset like maybe this won't work out. Oh, for sure. Because it's, it's, not about, it's not about from believing the that everything's going to come up sunshine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. or the, but it's just getting rid of the fact that, oh, I'm putting my effort into this. And on the subconscious level, there are certain tools or questions you can use to kind of figure out like, oh, why am I afraid? Why am I afraid? And it usually has to do with something like, oh, I'm working on this project. But in the meantime, I'm totally resisting it because I think it's going to turn out just like that time X, you know, exactly. that this happened. So I actually fully believe that that's going to happen again. And that belief, I'm infusing that, you know, those ideas and those fears into my efforts to move forward. Right. That's the kind of contradiction that we're doing all the time and realizing that it's something that you can solve for is really empowering. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. I want to learn more about that. Well, Let's, after our second workout class tonight, we can talk about it. <laughs> yes, no, perfect. Once we get doubly sweaty, I love it. So now that the chalkboard is six years old, six-ish, you have a team of how many people? Um, we're still really small. Um, 
We're a team of about five girls. That's what I thought, which I yeah. feel like I know all of them at this point, or yeah. at least have met all of well, them. Well, we have one who just moved to Morocco, so you haven't oh, met her. It's that's a long amazing. Story. <laughs> is she still working for you? She is. Oh, yeah. from Morocco. So She's that's been cool to have beginning. some remote. Yeah. What's her name? It's our Morocco office. Yeah. Her name's Kat Gregory. Okay. We love amazing. her. Hi, Kat. I was just wondering because I feel like there's always people that I'm communicating with, with mainly you, but other people are always yeah. CC'd. Yeah, and one of the reasons we're able to keep the team so small as well is because we are part of that Press Juice 3 family. So there's a lot of resources that we can lean on from them. That's That's so helpful. Yeah. So with a team of about five, what have you learned about delegating to a team? This is so fascinating to me. I am a one-person show. And I'm always so intrigued by how people work in teams, delegate to teams. I've never necessarily had a team. I have had help um, in various forms. And I've had like outer, you know, teams like management, assistant, that kind of stuff. But yeah, I feel like you get it. I mean, no, I do. But I want to hear what you have to say about it. Okay, well, be more specific with me. What so, you, so you started with the chalkboard. I'm imagining that the team a was smaller team. really small. And How now do, that there yeah. is a growing team, what have you learned about delegating in systems and yeah, kind of yeah. that kind of stuff okay. you were talking about? Well, this is one thing that I, I don't want to say I pride myself on. It's something that I kind of just get off on, right? I'm a super creative left-handed, right-brained Aquarius. <laughs> so um, I think my natural proclivity is like head in the clouds. You know, that's why I love to ideate and all that kind of thing. So I've actually made it like my life discipline to learn to create um, ways to kind of nail my feet to the ground, um, cycles, systems, that kind of thing. So I'm um, not necessarily like a systems loving person, but I think that the best thing um, that we've done is to create living infrastructure, um, really flexible infrastructure. So there is kind of a process, a worksheet, a <laughs> place in an Excel sheet for almost everything that we do. But um, it's very much about building systems, testing them, and say and making sure that everyone on the team is aware that nothing is precious. So if a system isn't working for us, it, we change it, we scrap it, we adjust it. But I think that even just going into um, building any infrastructure with a team or even just a one-on-one relationship and in, inside your business structure anyway, I think going in just with that mindset sets a great tone. So we actually haven't scrapped a whole lot of infrastructure. We've just gone into it knowing whatever is the most efficient, quickest, and most effective effective way um, to handle anything that we're doing daily or weekly or monthly. Let's set that up. Let's make it official. (laughs) Let's make it. And it always seems too much right at first. You're like, we don't need this, but it's like, this is what allows you these kinds of little systems and cycles are what allow you to put as much as you can on autopilot so that you can go full board into creativity and really focus on the the sprinkles and the icing that matter. So let's see. Yeah. Did I kind of complete that thought? <laughs> I think you did. Yeah. yeah. I think that that's so flexible structure very organized. And having a really having a place for everything. It's one of those things that say you're starting a small business or whatever, it always seems like too much in the beginning. You know, you're starting a new company. So, oh, I don't need this much infrastructure yet. I think I actually really did get this from my husband when I think back. I think this is something he really ingrained in me. He's like a systems genius. And he I think he must have really ingrained that in me that no matter what you're beginning, you start with the full infrastructure. You better be tracking that stuff because in a year when you're more savvy or when you're, you know, you need that info from taxes to inventory, whatever it might be, you can go back and it's clear as stone. It just allows you to do everything on another level. So anytime we start a new project, a new process, there's always a little bit of a some infrastructure there. And Ooh. it just makes it, makes everything better. I like hearing that. I really yeah. like hearing that because organization is probably my weakest suit as an entrepreneur, sure. as someone oh with a brand. Gosh. Yeah. It's tough for me. It's and so, I'm obnoxious. always looking for things. <laughs> it's obnoxious. So I'm always looking for things to make everything more streamlined and make it more just like you said, 
clear when looking yeah. back. Um, for example, my dad does my accounting for me, which he's like the most and organized ever, it. but he'll <laughs> call me and and ask me like something really specific about a specific payment or invoice yeah. or whatever it may be, something that I purchased. And because of my lack of organization frequently, I don't have an answer or it takes me like a whole afternoon to dig up a receipt or an online receipt for whatever it was. Yeah. And so I've tried to be a lot better and I actually have an Excel spreadsheet now for purchases and for business related purchases and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So your systems sound right up my alley yeah, for the I things like that I'm getting Putting into. that stuff in place, I think... Um, when you know you're not an organized person, and I think so many people feel that they're not, putting these little things in place in the very beginning, they take that pressure. They're going to give you such an emotional payoff, you know, when, yeah. you're all, when you're like, oh, I'm not an organized person. Putting these little things in place, even if it's buying, like, for you a beautiful box where you put your receipts when you come in the door or whatever so it may true. be. I feel, and this is really kind of like, my in my DNA about what I love to do with the chalkboard is putting that secret sauce on it, putting like I one phrase I return to over and again is um putting the bubblegum flavoring on the medicine. Oh yes. You know, I, love I feel that. like my role on earth is like to put the bubblegum flavoring on the That's medicine. Such a good role. It's what I love to do and in many different things that but really with my work right now, it really is kind of what it is is um if you think of if, you know, the idea of Excel sheets make you want to puke, <laughs> but it's the medicine you need. Like, how can you honestly, like, emo hack it, basically? Right. Yeah. Like, how can fun. you emotionally hack it for yourself? Right. You know? Wait, I love that you're saying this because I actually, a couple nights ago, came home. I had a lot of Excel stuff to catch up on. Just all of my invoices, just stuff that bores me to tears if right. I'm in the middle of my work day and I'm thinking it's looming over my head. So I decided to do it. I got home after a yoga class in the evening. I wasn't, so sometimes I'll come home and it's like, I have to eat. I'm starving yeah. or I have to get somewhere or whatever. It was this perfect window of time for me to sit down, blast my music, sit with Hudson. So on the floor, just yeah. like a comfortable spot, n nothing very formal whatsoever. And Type it all out, but I was in the zone. You were in the it's zone. It's never been more fun. And I'm, I had just I'm telling out. you, like, this is the kind of stuff I know I could probably, like, I don't have anyone at the top of mind, but um, there are people who know about the, like, mind, body, the act, what's actually happening in your brain when you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, the hormonal shift you're causing yourself creating an emotionally positive response to seeing Excel yes. open is actually a real thing where creating those little joys and like creating any pleasure you can around that kind of stuff will actually start to shift you to become some, maybe you'll never do your own accounting, right? And, you know, God willing, you'll never have to, Jordan. <laughs> Crossing my fingers. But like, you'll become someone, you'll shift. You really will shift and you'll shift your way. You'll become better, hopefully, at those things because, you know, you get rid of all that psychic weight of the like fear of it. And the yes, I love that. It. There's yeah. so much to be said for joy, yeah. for doing things joyfully. Mm -hmm. And even I just caught myself, I've been trying to catch myself lately saying things like I'm not an organized person or I'm not good at this right. because the power of words is, is extremely, it's, it has yeah. a lot of, it holds a lot of weight. Totally. So I've been trying, even when I go to bed at night, to like unsay those things, even just in my head. Yeah. And it's so corny, say, but so Yeah, I'm not real. an unorganized person. I'm just someone who hasn't put an emphasis on organizing and I'm going to learn and make it right. fun. I actually think this principle, it, it's great for organization, but I think it's the ultimate for health. I really do. That too. So it's the same thing. I'm, you know, it's, it's like me saying I have horrible digestion. Well, of course I do. I've been saying that my whole life. So it's time to unsay those things. And yeah. for me, think about I'm working on my digestion. I'm doing tons of things to improve my digestion and positivity, positivity. And it makes a huge difference. Yeah. The words and really too, just um, trying to infuse positive emotional connections to things that are good for you. There's so many ways to do that. I think anyone just thinking of that idea, you could think of five things that you hate that you know you should love. And knowing yourself, I don't care if it's ice cream, there are things you can do to like 
re-emotionally connect to those things and find a, a positive way in. Yes, I'm totally with you. If that's why you'll see all my supplements sitting right there beneath you, because for me, it's more fun to keep I them go here. All I know we'll definitely you. look through all of them and show you because I know you're into all the <laughs> functional medicine stuff too. But I keep them out here with my crystals, with my essential oils, and in this light, bright spot in my yeah. apartment. Because if it's I like had them mini bar. locked away, <laughs> it is like a mini bar. It's my version of a mini bar. If I had them locked away in a medicine cabinet in my bathroom in the dark where there's not a light in there, it just wouldn't be as fun. So to me, it's I get to experience. come out here. I get to make my bulletproof coffee or my breakfast yep. and blast mm-hmm. my music, pop my supplements in my mouth. And it's kind of... It's joyful for me. For I mean, sure. Call me crazy, but <laughs> no, I get it. it's a lot of fun. Um, so speaking of supplements yeah. and wellness and feeling good, <laughs> you are the queen of all things wellness, whether it be supplements or… <laughs> yeah, the princess of all or a duchess, all, all not the queen. <laughs> yes, well, you are you are definitely up there on the royal scale. So, what are some of your favorite wellness routines or yeah. wellness things to be into? Oh my gosh, what should we talk about specifically? I know because so, we could do, we could have just for everybody listening, we could have a podcast topic on just about any wellness, anything because Suzanne and I are so into all this stuff. Yeah, but, really. Yeah, it's what's so interesting? What's like new and exciting? For yeah. You? Oh gosh. Um, do you know what's funny is some of the things that you've been saying have, have made me think about um, this theme we've been talking about in the office a lot lately, which is just how exciting it is to see wellness uh, shift into a more mind-body space and and spiritual place. Right. So Not just food and fitness. Not just food and fitness. So that is the first thing that comes to mind as far as like what's happening in wellness right now that really excites me. I think that is incredibly exciting. And the truth is you can eat as much kale as you want, but if you're not, you know, if you're stressed, you're not well, you know? not enjoying it. And it's like exponential, right? Like if you're not rested or if you're stressed or if you have a toxic relationship, like there's no amount of supplements or kale to fix that. Right. Mm-hmm. Gosh, my, one of my most exciting wellness things to talk about in the last couple of years is my, I'll use the addiction word, <laughs> my, my addiction. addiction, yeah, yeah, healthy addiction though to um, these like superfood latte lattes oh, that yes. I make. Oh my God, what do you put in yeah, them? Yeah, and I feel like we talk about these a lot and I'm sure you have this experience too. You're like, oh, we've talked about this a million times. Everyone knows by now. No, I want to like, know no, what you put in yours. No one's, no one, everyone's doing their own thing. They exactly, everyone does their own doing. version yeah. too. Yeah, totally. So, um, you know, I'm a big coffee person. I'm actually born and raised in Seattle. So there was probably, you know, coffee in my bottles as a child. But um, I do love coffee and that's always an interesting topic in wellness, right? Because everyone is who is into coffee is done a coffee detox or is I love coffee anti too. coffee, you know. But um, I've made peace with a meaningful balanced place for coffee in my life. <laughs> uh, and one of the ways that I feel like I've done that is with the superfood lattes, where there have been weeks or months where I start making the lattes and that the coffee actually does exit the picture because I don't even care anymore about it as an ingredient. But, um, the kind of a few of the essential things that make it into these lattes for me, um, they're not, I do love Bulletproof and Bulletproof um, coffee, but I, that's not my daily jam. It's just not for me every day. Usually what I'm making is um, some kind of brew that has a bunch of adaptogens in it, some herbs, usually some like reishi, some chaga, um, definitely some spices usually half calf if I can get organic so that it doesn't have any heavy metals in it. Always some almond milk or hemp milk or something like that, a good healthy source of just like nutrition and fat. Um, but my personal jam that I don't see a lot of people doing, and I'm like, is there something I don't know that I should learn about this? But I love to put like a really good quality um, protein powder into I do my that lattes. Too. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's like the ultimate Mid morning. Well, because then it's more group. like a breakfast. Oh, it's for sure. Smoothie. Yeah. What kind of protein powders do you like? I, again, I'll use the A word addiction for my interest in um, this chocolate peanut butter vegan protein powder. I think it's amazing grass that makes it. Oh, yeah. So it's actually crazy ingredients, super nutrient dense. There are like greens in there and everything, but it's, um, it's chocolate peanut butter, which is definitely a strange latte flavor. Like have not seen that at Starbucks yet, but 
It's really good. Anything chocolate. Yeah. Um, but there are a few. There are actually a lot of really good protein powders on the market these days. I yeah, think, I think that so are clean too. And stuff. I use Vital Proteins in my. Yeah. It's more I of a collagen peptide powder, yes. but it has so much protein in it. I basically consider it a protein powder. I think collagen lattes actually were one of my first. Um, weird lattes I started getting mm-hmm. into and then I just kind of it avalanched into you know putting all my sun potion yeah, and stuff it gets, in it. Yeah it's so fun and it's funny that you say that sometimes you don't care about actual coffee as an ingredient because yeah. I'm equally addicted to coffee <laughs> and sometimes I get that way too where I'll make my adaptogenic latte and if I don't have any coffee on hand I don't even care because yeah. I have my mushroom coffee I have the like the hot water in there I'll so have some what I'm really milk. after, I feel like, with coffee, and I'm sure many people can relate, is just that really rich, like, flavor. Sorry to interrupt you. This. Oh, my God. I think Hudson notes. really loves you. <laughs> <laughs> He's sleeping right behind Suzanne, you guys. Yes, it's painfully I love it. cute. So, the mushrooms. Um, yeah, but I'm really going for that, like, roasty flavor. Yes. And so, um, one of the things that also usually is in those lattes is cacao powder. So, I think that is the the reason why coffee sometimes doesn't even make it in is because cacao is so, I mean, for one, it has a little kick to it, but um, it has that really deep like flavor that I'm looking for from coffee and yes. the mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. That rich chocolatey yes. flavor is so good. Yes. Ooh, those are some amazing. Yeah. So that's one of my favorites. Um, or one of my favorite like daily tools. I really am drinking one of one or two of those. Like I said, if I do it in the afternoon, it might not have coffee in it, but I'm, those are kind of like my warm smoothie. <laughs> I'm also not really like smoothies are such a wonderful tool that almost every wellness person uses. I feel like because you can use it almost as a supplement where you can put all these incredibly healthy ingredients into it. I'm just not really a cold foods person. And we could get into the whole Chinese medicine, yeah. blood type, body type stuff with that. But um, I've just kind of learned to embrace it. Like I like to drink warm stuff. Go with it. This is my version of. Yeah. And smoothie. are you like that with with foods too? Like salads versus like a warm oh. bowl? No, I guess I'm not. Actually, yeah, I think it is just liquids. Now that you say that. Because yeah. I'm like salad queen. Yeah. I, I figured as yeah. much just because there's so many good salads <laughs> out there. But being into Ayurveda and being myself, a pitta who yeah. can get a vata imbalance and I'm technically supposed to be eating warm foods. Yeah. So staying away from salads. I know. Staying away actually even from juices if I was going by yeah. what my Ayurvedic practitioner oh, no, says and sure. smoothies. I just find that topic so interesting. I know. It is really fascinating. So There's the Chinese body types, right? We probably have a chalkboard article about this if you want to look it up, but you could also just Google it. The Chinese body types are really fascinating to look into as well on that. Yeah. So that's different from like your dosha? Yeah. It's it's like doshas where it's like these different constitutions. There's also um, the blood type diet, which is really controversial, I I think. But at the same time, um, they do have these like constitutions based on your blood type that I think are- I can't actually even remember. I only remember what it says about me. Yeah, exactly. The That's the more important part. Um, which is alarming. By <laughs> <laughs> no, one, it's probably on record somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Well, I'm blood um, type O and I'm supposed to be eating tons of red meat. Oh, interesting. Isn't that interesting? Which my sister would always tell me when I was a raw vegan. And I wrote it off, wrote it off, wrote it off. But when I was healing from being so out of balance for all those years, it was red meat that my body was craving. That's so interesting. And in your body was just craving it. Yeah. Well, I needed the iron, I yeah. think, specifically. I feel like your blood type is also supposed to get um, really robust exercises. Does yes. that resonate oh, with you? Yes. <gasps> oh, yeah. Exactly. I thought so. The See, high so there's something is very, in, whatever it is that's at the core of it, there's something very interesting because my um, blood type is supposed to get very relaxing exercise, like very, um, I don't know, mind body exercise. Yeah, restorative. And I was like so relieved when I read that because I'm always feeling guilty about how much I don't love to get my butt kicked. You know, at most of the classes my friends do, I'm like, maybe I'm lazy, but I'm like, oh no, it's my blood type. (laughs) Okay, I love that because I think a lot of people listening can relate to how different we all are, how different our preferences are. And I think it's so 
unhealthy at the end of the day to worry about what type of exercise you do or do not like because forcing yourself into something that you're not enjoying, well, A, you're not going to be consistent. Yes. B, it's not fun. It's not joyful. Well, just like I think we were that's talking the about ultimate key with health, right? It's just realizing how individual and independent it is. So if your best friends are, you know, nuts about sweet potatoes and it's changing their lives, you know, it might not be a fit for the way your body processes hormones or whatever it might be. I mean, it's true for every food. And I think the more you learn about wellness and nutrition, the more you kind of see that reflected in little pieces that oh, wait, I was already drawn to that. Or yes. this was already for me. It, it's exactly that example of me thinking, oh gosh, I don't like really tough workouts. Like I need to get on that. When it's like, no, you never did. Like you already knew what to do. I think that there's a lot of beauty in, the, in that kind of phrase, like that you, you know what to do. If you can get tapped into your intuition, I, I would even call myself an intuitive eater. Like that is, yeah. I wonder what my mom would say if I if I even told her the phrase into a beater. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I know. My mom's <laughs> always like, explain that again to me. Yeah. Or today, I believe it was, what's a shaman again? Because yeah. I'm like telling her that I want to go to this shaman program, which yeah. I'm probably doing. But, but it's so, so funny. The phrase intuitive eater seems a little overheard LA, but I, I really am. Like there are times where I, I really know what to eat. I know what my body needs. And I just kind of go with that flow. Yeah. I like think that's important. a beautiful way to eat. I think that's actually, if I was going to advocate any diet or any lifestyle, I would say eat intuitively. Yeah. Because you know what you need. Your body knows what it needs. And I think when you're fueling yourself with the food that your body craves, then you're setting yourself up for consistency and to feel really good and to give yourself what you need. This kind of loops back to what we were talking about earlier about finding good positive emotional hooks for your habits. When you are eating intuitively, what what I at least for me, what when I'm eating intuitively, what I've discovered is I will tap into like I really need Sweet Lady Jane, <laughs> this really amazing bakery in our neighborhood. Um obviously that's not really what my body's craving, but I my body is trying to tell me something. You know that I'm needing comfort or that I'm needing fat maybe even, or that I'm not eating enough. Or I don't know. It could, it, every one of us knows for ourselves what it, what it means, but it's interesting to look at that kind of thing and see like, oh, well, how did I, how did cake become the thing for me or whatever it is for people? Coke or, you know, Coca-Cola yeah. that is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Wine, one or the coffee, other. cake. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with most of these things um, in their place. But at some point, if you look back, we, we have like an emotional connection that we built either intentionally totally or right. unintentionally. So how can you learn to like reconnect in that moment with something satiating or, and sometimes it is about having cake, of course, but yeah. how can you build wonderful new one, you know, emotional connections to things that will actually do good things for you? Yeah, I know. A tip I have for that is I was always super tied to having chocolate after dinner. Yeah. slash lunch sometimes too. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, first of all, especially if you're eating a good quality dark chocolate, low yeah. glycemic, all that good stuff, if we're talking about having it all the time. But I also wanted to break the habit because I didn't want it to be an addictive habit or right. an obsessive habit or right. like distracting if I can't have it, that kind of thing. I don't think, I don't think I think moderation is very important. Totally. So, but let's be honest what, too. You also wanted to like conquer it. And like, well, I, I wanted refuse to, con- to yes. be ruled by anything. I, I refuse to be ruled by that. Exactly. <laughs> so I started replacing that habit or that craving with something else that had nothing to do with food. And this tip was given to me by an expert on intuitive eating. I can't remember who it was, but it was probably in an article that I read. And then I probably talked to this person too, because I was so into all that kind of stuff when I was recovering from orthorexia, I started replacing it with like things for myself that didn't have anything to do with food. So totally taking a bubble bath with a great book or going on a walk, listening to music or just writing in my journal or lighting like some really good smelling incense. Right. Next thing you know, the last thing on your mind is chocolate and you're like, I'm actually full. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of people without any food issues, but there are also... A lot of us. And 
I don't want to say especially women, but especially women Mm -hmm. um, who we have, you know, our, our wide spectrum of, and I don't even mean anything dramatic, right. um, With food issues, but we all have um, these mental and emotional connections to things. So I think that's a great point that when you're being an intuitive eater, like you can tap into the why behind what you're doing and get a lot out of it that has way more to do than food. You know, like you, you learn to like meet an emotional needs you had with a new life behavior just, and it just came up because of the chocolate thing. You know Exactly. What I mean? Yes. Yes. So, because it was really a deep emotional something. Yeah. Like a craving. It's a good way to be yeah. honest with yourself. I think that's kind of what's funny about it is when you honestly think, okay, wow, you're, you're ready to like go in on the cake now, huh? Like you can only, you, you can only process your whys behind it within and tell like, it's fine. Great. Let's have a good day. Or, yeah. or like, okay, there's actually something kind of going on. Like there's something that I need that I'm not giving myself or there's something, maybe I'm anxious and I'm trying, or, you know, you can kind of become more in touch yes. with your needs and your emotions by being an intuitive eater too. Yeah. I 100% agree. So before we get into the rapid fire questions, we have to at least briefly discuss Nicola. Yes. At the Ojai Valley Inn. Oh my gosh. So Susanna and I saw Nicola like a week apart from each other, our last, which is last yeah. story of our lives yeah. because I feel like we're always interconnected with so, things. Yeah. Nicola is like one of four things I would say in the last month where I've been like, wait, <laughs> like it's like a domino effect like we're we're so in sync right now yes. on all these fun health things I, oh no you're right Nicola is only one in four because we have our LED lights the light therapy we have the pearl butter I think we were both the into butter. so good I mean oh sometimes it's just stuff that you're like posting I'm like what yeah because I get all into all this stuff and yes. so do you so Nicola for everybody listening i Definitely have mentioned her before, but in case you haven't heard me mention her, she is a shaman in Ojai who works at the Ojai Valley Inn. She does energy alchemy and dream sessions, and she's just a pretty magical person. She's like one of her offerings is a shamanic journey to the stars, which I didn't get the chance to do. But what I did do with her was sit there and have an alchemy session in which there's actually not a lot of speaking involved, at least in my session. And I did talk about this on my solo podcast recently, but I saw her face morph. And this was something I was telling Suzanne at Kelly's book launch party. Like (laughs) I saw her face morph. It was crazy. I saw either her past lives or shamans that have infused their teachings into her. And she saw my face morph into what she believes is like the Pleiadian yeah. realm. So right. it's all just such cool stuff. But so tell oh us about gosh. your experience with yeah. Nicola. Wait, so have you told your audience yet about your experience basically? I have. So I talked okay. on my, I had a spiritual based solo podcast cool. and then I had a Q&A solo podcast where I touched on it because it's been so exciting to me. I know. But I'm going to go back and listen to that one. Yeah. The spiritual one. I haven't fully delved into it just because there's so much I want to learn, but I do feel connected the, to the Pleiadians, which did she talk to you about those at yeah, all? Yeah. So I don't think I'm, I'm one of those apparently, and, but we had an amazing connection. So I think it's interesting to, for my experience to note that the inn had asked me to make an appointment with her. Like they wanted to offer me a session with her and I first turned it down, which is really kind of an, I think an an interesting note as well in this whole wellness world, especially when we're talking about how everything's becoming so spiritual and all this stuff. So my first um, reaction was to decline the offer to come and see Nicola because I'd never met her. I didn't know her. And I have this rule, which I kind of, I think is an interesting point to bring up that, um, I'm really careful with who I let, like put hands on me, work on me, like, which is very smart. I will say and I just think it's energy a nice work note. is powerful. Yeah. Like uh, whether it's Reiki or, you know, anything along those lines, just as you're discerning with your doctors and stuff, um, even more so right. When someone, if someone is like deep vibes and connected in, Um, and I'm not sure who they are. I'm sometimes cautious or I need like a reference or from someone I trust, that kind of thing. So I think that's actually like a good note to put out there. It is. You know, not to just like fly on into anyone's office and be open to it all because there are a lot of different flavors of people out there and 
you know, 100%. we're all human. Um, but anyway, I did end up making the appointment. I was so glad um, her office and vibe and ex- the whole experience was so beautiful. So um, I had a crazy experience with her too. I didn't have any of the face, like I definitely saw her face kind of shift a little bit, but when we were talking about it and then you told me like, it was like this full morphing situation. I was like, oh, oh, oh. Yes, but it was, it was subtle. <laughs> like when you say shift, it began that way. Yeah. So I can imagine what you saw her face. Totally. Into. Yeah. It was just kind of like almost an, an expression kind of thing. But um, no, we had this great thing where um, we did like a saging ritual and um, I'm a super, like I'm a, cry at the drop of a hat person if I'm emotionally processing. So of course I shed some tears and comforted her that I was okay because, which I always feel I need to do. Yeah. Um, but no, um, I'm trying to remember what like the highlight was there. There was really just like this presence, I guess that came and that I was like feeling something and she was able to identify it and what she identified was something so key and symbolic for one of my like life goals on like a kind of like a humanitarian level or that's not quite the right word, but with what I wanted, the kind of work that I want to do with people and with kids, it, she like tapped into it and it was, was crazy. I I mean, I don't want to like divulge all the the personal details, but it was definitely, you know, magical and I think too, having said that I want, I was cautious going into it. I think what I've learned to do in those appointments too, is I feel, I really felt like I remained in control, which I'm not like a controlling person, I would say, but I remained like personally empowered and in my space. And I didn't feel like overpowered by her, which I think is really great. And I think she goes out of her way to really make sure that's what the experience is. And I think that's at the core basically of any good energy medicine, spiritual thing is that it's really about what's going on with you and that person's there to help facilitate. I agree. I think she's very inviting in that way where she's not, she's not going to be overpowering. Yeah. I think I mentioned to you, I knew her from a different phase in her life and I was shocked to see the transformation. And also maybe she's always been this way. I didn't know her well enough back then to know, but I know that she was inviting because while I am the kind of person to say yes to many, many energy work appointments, but you make a very good point because I actually, after that, after all that, I read this really scary article about someone who got like bad energy through Reiki and had to get it reversed. And that's scary. So of course, everybody listening, do your research on who you go to. And I think actually just to go a little deeper on that point to, um, I think it is good to realize that whether you're going to a yoga class or you're going to like, you know, an exercise class, it's never, um, or something, you know, way deeper, like this appointment that we had. Um, it's always good to remember that it is about you. Like the point is the transformation inside. There aren't a lot of people out there who can truly give something to you that it's about the process of you receiving the experience or stuff that you've got to like untangle within. I just think it's good for us to remember in this age, we're talking about how trends happen, right? It's like these people who have a wonderful gift and are able to help enlighten people and stuff. It's easy for us to get fixated on them. And they're usually wonderful people, you know, to get like to fall in love with. But I just think it's really important for all of us to remember that it's about the work we've got to do within you know, even if we're working with a practitioner, it's, it's always about us. Yes. And it should be because you both need to be empowered, but you also remember the responsibility that it, it's totally. you that has to do the work. I like that. I like that note, definitely, because I think people can get really easily disappointed when they talk to an energy healer or a medium or anyone like that if it's not the answer they were looking for. But the truth is, it's all about the receival and what what do you find within it. Yeah, that's 100%, true. And the way you process it. And- yes. And Nicola, I do believe, was so inviting and so warm because I was with three of my friends who I grew up with who are not into all this stuff. They have never <laughs> wanted to go to a healer before. Totally. They never thought about it. And <laughs> I dragged them in to our group session after my private session. And she, like you said, she held space for them to have their experience. And 
I would say she proved herself as someone very intuitive immediately to each one of them. That's so cool. And that made me so happy because I was nervous after I had this really deep personal experience with her to bring in three people who could be skeptical. And it was just amazing. She picked up on the coolest things about them and told them a little bit about like their potential past lives as goddesses and Egyptians. And we just had fun with it. It was totally, it was totally cool. That's so crazy. I know. I love that we both went there. I know. She's right great. after each Hi, other. Yeah. We love you. Yeah. Hi, Thanks Nicola. Me. We love you. So rapid fire questions. Okay. Fun. I think I know the answer to this one. Chocolate <laughs> or vanilla? Oh, chocolate. Yeah, totally. Home or traveling? Ooh. Can I have several homes in exotic locations? Yes. Can I cheat? <laughs> yeah. That's, that would be my answer, I, too. But I'd have to say home. Yeah, home. Um, That's favorite, where we're all traveling, too. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's true. Favorite 90s jam. Ooh. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. I wish this was like A through D or something. Oh, my gosh. What's 90s I know. Specific? I could give you A through D. I can just name bands at least. So, okay. NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, TLC. Okay, no. <laughs> None. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Okay, you know, every <laughs> single person I've asked this question to, because this rapid fire section is new-ish, yeah. has been like, I have no idea about yeah. the 90s. Oh, my game. gosh. That's funny. Someone came to mind, and I, I forgot them already, but... I'll probably be like singing someone's music all night after I yeah, think about who it is. It's funny. Well, because I was born in the 90s. So when I think of 90s music, I'm just like anything, anything totally. I grew up listening to. But most people I've asked this to are like, who, who were Gosh, even popular so, in the 90s? And yeah. And then there's weird, like small genres of the 90, of 90s I music. Maybe I need to make my question more specific <laughs> for the future. I'm surprised a lot of people were searched by that. I thought that would just be me. That's funny. Yeah. A lot of people were. Favorite crystal and why? Ooh, gosh. That is so hard, right? Because I feel the way about crystals, I do about colors. So it's kind of that similar thing. But I will talk about this um, Shungite crystal that I'm really into right now, which I just learned about from the ladies at Energy Muse. I was just going to say, that sounds like a very Energy Muse thing. Yeah. So it's this um, Russian source Shungite. It's a black, dense crystal. And um, there are, of course, certain just like clay and charcoal does. There are a lot of these crystals that kind of are absorbent, if you will. They like absorb. There's a a correct word for that. But um, these crystals are supposed to absorb extra EMF, which is all the like air pollution from our laptops and phones, for lack of a better word. So um, I'm super into these crystals right now. She is actually putting the crystal chips in water. Yes. And then, um, of course, not drinking the crystals, but drinking the crystal infused water. And she said that she has her family drinking this and her son has like had a detox reaction at first. And it's just getting, supposedly getting EMFs out of the water. So again, this is is a kind of an esoteric thing still. Yeah. I wish it wasn't. Well, Heather talked about this on the podcast Oh, okay. And I don't know if people listening remember or heard that part or heard that episode, but I've been fascinated by it. And she said that they're going to start making Shungite cups. Yes. Like cups made of this. Exactly. Which yeah, would yeah, be yeah. such a good thing to drink your water. And, and I like have to say. And kind of chic. Yeah. yeah, and chic. They sound beautiful. Yeah, and I, NASA works with this stone a little. Yeah. Uh, she has some really interesting stuff. There are Shungite rooms where people going through chemotherapy or, I'm sorry, radiation can like get in that room and detox, basically. It's cool. super fascinating. Yeah, well, that's a good answer. Not a very rapid answer. Yeah, when I had her on the podcast, she put <laughs> Shungite on my computer and then I wanted to keep it. So I, yeah. need, I need to go into their shop soon. Ooh, also and get some selenite. Stuff. Yeah, selenite. Obsessed. Okay. So powerful. Yeah. I sleep with it. And beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it is. amazing. It is I, beautiful. I love it. If you could live by one wellness tip, what would it be? I mean, I think it'd be cheating to say the intuitive thing because it's so such a large concept. I don't think so. Yeah, but maybe that. Or um, I think just like staying in equilibrium. So finding ways, whatever ways I can to like stay in a state of equilibrium with like, you know, your mind and your heart. Mm, That's a good answer. If you could be any animal in the world, what animal would you be? Oh my gosh. Something in the ocean. So I don't know. 
A puffer fish? <laughs> I love puffer fish. I love them so much. Yeah, I always think I'm like, oh, in some other universe, in some other life, I'll be like an ocean creature. I could see you as like a dolphin or yeah, a puffer fish. Yeah, I can definitely embrace or... that. I just feel like a dolphin was too obvious. I mean, a puffer fish is ridiculous, but yeah. It's so cute. <laughs> I love it. And they're very human-like. Yeah. Like and my friend had one growing up and it would like follow us around the room because they had this big aquarium wall kind of thing yeah. and it would smile at you. I love that. So cute. That or a little forest creature. Anything can kind of just get lost in the expanse of things. Definitely. The one item in your pantry you can't live without. Ooh, that is really hard. I mean, I'll just pick one. I love the herb rhodiola um, and I use sun potions, but I've also used a Chinese herbalist brand that I really love. And I always think it's the one that um, I feel the most, that I think I probably need the most for, in my personality and my yes. makeup and stuff. Yes. Favorite natural beauty item? Ooh. Well, the first one that comes to mind is... I mean, I could give, this is a hard question, um, is One Love Organics um, oil cleanser. I love it so much. It's an oil cleanser, but it rinses off. Cause so most oh, nice. oil cleansers, you have to like go through this whole process. And I usually fatigue of that and go back to different cleanser. This oil cleanser is great for my skin. It takes off makeup and stuff and you can rinse it off really fast. And now I've seen that it's like top 10 lists and a lot of great Ooh. retailers and stuff. So I'll have to look into that. Yeah. My I've other been... one though, actually, Well People's Foundation Stick. I am like the poster child for that really? makeup stick. Well I'm People? Obsessed. I yes. feel like I should order that. Oh, I think I it. lost the foundation that I recently got from Bare Minerals. I love oh, you, it. And I was absolutely like carting it around it's... and lost it. It's like a NARS stick kind of the for, the formation. Yeah. But it's it's this really clean, non-toxic, has aloe in it, and my skin's kind of reactive. So you know, sometimes you put on makeup and it actually yes. makes your skin worse. It never makes my skin worse. You can put it on thick or light, and I have I've just I've used it for years. Is that what you have right now on? Yeah. Your I think skin so. looks so good. Oh girl, it's that it's so stick. glowing. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. What inspires you the most? Ooh my husband, I think. Oh, God, I mean, not to be corny, but he is my unicorn. <laughs> I love that. I just feel like I learned, I, I love being married to someone who's so different for me, who's smart at such really different things than I am. That's beautiful. I love love so much. Me too. So I, I love that answer. What would you most like to be known for? Oh, that's hard. Um, I guess I do love ideas so much and it's such a core of what I do. It's like what I do for fun is kind of learn and ideate. So I think I'd want to be known for like helping people like see beautiful, useful ideas for themselves. Like obviously, yay, kitchen staples, but on a, lar a larger scale, just I think f going back to some of the themes we talk talked about, like there's so much so much great stuff in life to be accessed. That's just a matter of, of shifting your mind, not your resources, not anything. It's just like a realization or a new idea that can just shift your whole life. So I'd love to like help facilitate that for people just as much as I can. I think you're really good at that. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah. And so this last one, I don't know if you're a podcast listener, and what are some of your favorite podcasts to listen to? This is a fun question. So we just launched a new series today, actually. That's like um, podcasts we love. Ooh. And it literally came from like, you know, in our office conversation. We were chatting <laughs> up about, all the yeah. time. It started because I was talking about the first podcast that we are um, featuring. We should obviously do this with one of yours, too. Uh, maybe that's how we'll share this podcast yeah, with our audience. that's a good idea. But um, we started with a podcast by Luke Story. I love Luke Story. Yeah. He's been on this podcast, and oh, I'm yeah. obsessed with Luke's podcast. Okay, so he did... So what we do is focus on a specific episode. Um, we have a couple more coming up that different girls on our team really loved. And this first one is with this natural oncologist. He's this guy who... Um, it's actually a, a little touchy for us to get into. I'd say on the chalkboard, we put all our medical disclaimers on there and we don't endorse what this guy is saying because people get, you know, so crazy about this stuff. But it, the pod does just explain how how this guy personally is working with individual clients 
with these incredibly cheap, incredibly accessible tools to help shift cancer. I and need to listen to that episode. How have I missed it? Yeah, it's really fascinating. Wow. Yeah, Luke's podcast is awesome. Yeah, but I, I, I think Bulletproof is probably yeah. also a Such a favorite. good one. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's amazing. This is... Is so fun. I, I love having well, you here. Obviously, this is a fave as well, Jordan. Yes. And we will do fun stuff when this episode comes out. And everybody listening, definitely go check out the chalkboard. Yeah, we're the and, chalkboardmag.com. Yes. And on Instagram, same. Yeah, same. The chalkboard, the chalkboard mag. mag. Yeah. And why is it mag and not magazine? Um, mag is usually, at least when we started too, it's just kind of like usually the little thing that you throw in there for um, digital mm-hmm. magazines. That and, makes sense. And it is important to me, I think, that people understand that we're kind of a magazine, not a, a blog, because I think it represents the diverse voices that we share on the site. It's, yes. it's not just like, hey, here's Suzanne talking about health. Or yes. It's this, um, yeah, it's more like a magazine. Yeah, I like that. And where can people find you? Um, oh, well, at the chalkboard. <laughs> um, and then my personal handle is Suzanne underscore underscore HLL. Yes. I was going to say, I know your handle if you, yeah. if you don't. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm like, what I is have my this handle? weird photographic memory when it comes to anything written, including Instagram handles. I love So if that. anybody's ever like, oh, is there an underscore in mine? I'm like, there's two. Yeah. <laughs> and then people are like, what? It's so funny. That. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here. This thank was so Thank you so fun. much for having me. This was so fun, yes, Jordan. We'll I'm glad you back. finally did it. Me yeah. too. Yay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode with Suzanne. I adore her and I'm so glad that she got to share all of her wisdom and tips and tricks with you guys. I know that you probably gained a ton of inspiration from her and that makes me really happy. Thank you for listening all the way through and I'm glad that you're still here. I just wanted to remind you guys about the Mind Body Green Functional Nutrition Program that you can still sign up for until tomorrow, the 26th, by using my my link bit.ly slash mbgxtbb that is b-i-t dot l-y slash capital mbg lowercase x capital tbb and i'm doing this functional nutrition program so i think it'll be really fun to do it together we can talk about it in the soul on fire podcast tribe we can talk about it on email If you have any questions, I'll try to get back to you, especially if you subject your email with functional nutrition program. And also if you feel called to rate and review this podcast, I always send out my tips and tricks ebook for blogging to everybody who heads to the iTunes store and rates and reviews the podcast by typing in the Balanced Blonde podcast and sending me a screenshot of your rating and review and bonus points if you subscribe so that you get the little notification on your phone every time there's a new episode you never know when I'm gonna surprise you with the bonus episode I love doing bonus episodes on Mondays hint hint so thank you Suzanne for being here thanks to you guys for listening and come hang out on Instagram soul on fire podcast tribe on the functional nutrition program which you can also find the link for that in the show notes and thanks so much for being here oh and thanks to sunbasket for sponsoring love all of you guys and till next week we'll talk soon